so it's place, yeah. Where can we go? Uh, we are all on Fossum, which means it's a developer meeting. So I expect you are working with software. If you're not, uh, raise your hand. Very good. Ah. Ah. Um, yes, so we have software and you want users to use it. So um, only users don't like broken software. So um, you need testing. And um, you might find out that testers don't like completely broken software either. And so we need some tests without testers, which sounds difficult, but it isn't because you can just do automated testing. And there we are, automated testing. And Uh, the title uh, is actually uh, from an email where someone uh, emailed a result uh, to some Linux user mailing this and uh, the recipient said, oh damn, that made my creation really start drooling. <laughs> and so, uh, yes, this is cool, it really helps. Oh no, we start just differently. We start with the team. Uh, this is OpenQA. Uh, I expect some have not seen it yet. It's a service that runs automated testing on all recent open source builds and uh, has this nice uh, result overview page. And the results look like. Oh, which one do we take now? That's a cool stuff. So, uh, and what it is, is a video in our format, which you can easily view in Firefox and watch the time uh, there and uh, do anything a user does. And it works uh, by uh, having a virtual machine with KVM, the kernel virtual machine. Uh, capturing screen output every half a second and everything and a nice video which can be used later by anyone, not just developers, not just testers, by anyone. So, um, to enable people to help, they can just uh, have a look like. Oh, that seems to look uh, crappy, or oh, it shouldn't do this, or the translation is broken, or uh, anything. So it helps. And uh, this one not only tests installation by uh, doing this stuff, uh, it also tests uh, upgrade uh, from old versions. Uh, I tell later. Um, the interesting part is it's a video. I can just skip forward and see, oh, it tests console applications and skip even more forward. Like, oh, it tests SSH minus X, X term stuff and oh, Firefox, yes. And it uh, even does uh, application tests and checks the output, the screenshots, for no good uh, parts, like uh, using MD5 sums and as a list of those MD5 sums which are no good. And this one is a Modsmer test suite from the nice Firefox guy who was over there. And, ah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so, on top of my test, I can run in the VM more tests, and I plan to extend that with uh, Office Suite and maybe others. So uh, there's some rather nice feedback and things. So yeah, 
and uh, the Firefox is cool because it will upload into the uh, Firefox uh, web page and you can like see which uh, tests failed uh, there. And that's nice. So, um, so, why should we do testing at all? Uh, so, of course, yes, there are bugs because. Uh, programmers are doing new things, and uh, yes, uh, they are working on big projects. And big projects means uh, no single person can oversee the whole uh, thing and not know about all the consequences of what he is doing. So yes, you uh, will always have bugs. Which means, yes, uh, there should be a way to find them and uh, to get them out. Uh, means that, yes, uh, debugging and uh, fixing also includes programming, so you get no bugs uh, by debugging too, which can be a quite <laughs> difficult process to get all of them out of the bug. So. Distributions are especially complicated because uh, they're complex. Uh, not just because you have a few thousand pages, uh, but because you have programs that use libraries and uh, programs that use other programs, all programs, and you have programs that communicate over sockets with other <laughs> programs that need to be running. So there is a lot of interaction, and the actual components of this interaction are maintained and developed uh, by usually uh, different persons or projects. So you might run into un unexpected uh, situations there where you change component A, uh, but you get a very unexpected effect in component B uh, in a very different place. And this uh, does not just apply to Linux distributions, but also to other big software projects like uh, OpenOffice or uh, Firefox, possibly. So um, you need uh, testing in a lot of places. And then uh, you have development uh, in all open source projects, free software projects. A lot of development happens every day on the Git repository or any <laughs> repository. And you want to find bugs uh, in a timely manner, because if you are a developer and code today something, and tomorrow someone comes and say, oh, this is broken, uh, you might even have the editor open and remember what you did. But uh, if the bug made it into the next uh, stable release of uh, what you did, then it might be half a year or two years later, and uh, then the user comes and says this is broken, you think, oh dear. Uh, and maybe you don't even remember what you did, or maybe the, um, uh, the developer left the project and someone else uh, left was maintaining it and hates it. And that's not nice, so you, you want some quick testing, this uh, quick feedback. Uh, that is also a uh, really good thing uh, for uh, developers, not just for testers or users. So um, that's why you also need some good testing. So if you don't have this, uh, there can some bad things happen, which is uh, testers or uh, users that there's some overlap uh, between those groups. Um, we get frustrated and go away and say, oh, I don't need your crappy project and I go uh, to some other project. And if you lose testers, it will mean not as good testing, which means uh, the overall quality would be lower and uh, you don't want that. Uh, you want the exact opposite, uh, which means uh, good testing. So automated testing is just a part of it, uh, but uh, an important part, and uh, you want some good processes, 
uh, like uh, having mandatory tests that need to pass before you do a beta release or um, release candidate. And if you follow those processes, it will ultimately lead to a higher quality and happier test than end users, of course, too. So you really want good testing. But, um, well, testing, yes. Uh, but why automated testing? It's so um, difficult to code everything. So why spend this much work on automating things which you could do just by click, click, and uh, be done? Yes, yes. And uh, well, I'm a programmer, so I know about the cheap virtues of programmers, which are uh, laziness and patience and hubris, as yeah. stated by uh, the inventor of Perl. Um, so, um, this needs some more explanation, of course. Uh, laziness means uh, I don't want to do the same thing every day again and again. Uh, so, I spend a lot of work uh, doing this automation to be lazy later. And impatience means uh, I want the results as early as possible. So, if my test runs an hour, uh, I want to have an e a lot earlier. Like, when I get up, I look into my browser on OpenKate or OpenSUSE and watch the video and uh, have the result after one or two minutes because uh, it already ran uh, from the cron job at night. And uh, so, yes, I. <laughs> That's impatient and hubris means uh, I want it all so good and so nice that nobody wants to say anything bad about it. Still have to work somewhere with this one. But it's improved. So, what are we doing? We are doing a lot of things. For example, uh, install uh, <coughs> everything, we test upgrades from old versions, which are sometimes more difficult than a fresh install. We test uh, important applications on top of that. Uh, and other tests for uh, old known bugs. Uh, there were some quite interesting examples. And localization testing, for example, saying, okay, I'll enter everything in German and see if the translations work or if applications crashed uh, because of uh, the different language. And I save a log file which has uh, CPU statistics in there. So I can compare, uh, did this version need more CPU time than the other version? So I can use it even for benchmarking. Uh, the whole thing, or only parts of it. And another thing that uh, I've only recently found is uh, desecting, because uh, even if a bug has been uh, in there for quite a while, uh, I've been running my tests for quite a while too, and I can have a look at old results and see, oh, this started at November 17th, and what commits were there, so uh, I can uh, pretty much a point to a commit uh, that causes bug, uh, which is nicer uh, than having to search everything. So, um, let's have a look at the live demo. I have it installed here. Um, it's pretty much uh, check out of my Git repository, which is now the unofficial one uh, on Victoria's uh, named OS dash auto inst, and uh, there I have this test run directory where I just have one environment uh, <coughs> thing which uh, gives some extra parameters for the test, like uh, <coughs> how often uh, do we screenshot every half a second, and uh, which 
including the port I'll be using for the communication with the VM and we are viewing over VNC and have some German keyboard and SMP now. Um, so um, there I can just run the test with where is it? Yeah. Um, Recording <coughs> the ISO to video uh, script, uh, giving it one ISO image here, and saying, okay, do the live test. Oh no, uh, there's even a more high level thing which we could use here. Because uh, I did this a lot of integration for OpenSUSE, I have a high level thing where I just say, make. Uh, and it says, okay, uh, this test has already run, so it doesn't need to run again. Uh, but of course it's made, so I can say, uh, do it anyway, with the standard make parameters, and uh, it's also nice because I can use make-j uh, uh, and have it run test in parallel on multi-core uh, systems with nice, uh, storage uh, that doesn't compete for uh, the seeking. And when it runs the test, it starts a VM there and creates its virtual disks. And I can attach a VNC here, there, and see how it does things. And see a typing there. And in the log file, I see how it uh, does uh, send key F, and this is this F, and then it does uh, send key space, which is the space. And uh, you can pretty much uh, watch the testing, if you like. Uh, but you can also just let it run unattended via cron job and uh, view the results later. So, really powerful. And, um, what do we do? Yeah, we could let it run a bit. So that's some options there using the serial console because the output is more um, predictable. So um, my tests, I have some scripting. Uh, it's all written in Perl. And I have test modules, which I just uh, throw into a certain directory. And uh, they get picked up by the testing. And there I have some functions like uh, wait for um, the stage, like wait for the welcome screen, or wait for uh, the thing booted up and it will recognize it using the screenshots, usually. And to recognize it on the screenshot, it does MD5 sums here uh, over the certain regions of the screen, like uh, here X, Y, and width and height. <laughs> yeah, it works, actually. Uh, and of course, if our art team uh, comes up with a new background image, I have to update uh, <laughs> five sun, yes. Uh, but uh, it works really well, uh, because uh, sometimes people uh, would just uh, use a wrong background image file and have a back black background, and my test will immediately pop up and say, oh, this didn't boot. Uh, as it should. And uh, here it detected uh, OSIS booted GNOME because uh, somewhere it was an MD5 sum. I uh, hear this one, which is in my list of known MD5 sums, and says, okay, booted GNOME, and uh, looks like uh, built a thousand something or later. And uh, it indeed is there. So uh, we can just keep it running. Since it has uh, a build number there, would it keep track of um, that build number across MD5? So that if, for instance, there is a version somewhere and you get an older screenshot, something that looks like an older build but is actually a newer build, that we, we would fill as well? Yeah, of course, if it still looks the same. Yeah, no, the idea, what, what I'm asking is say, say that you have an MD5 sun, like you've got built at 1016. And then later on, you get an, an, a, checks, a checksum that looks like something that was 
uh, 3900 or something. Um, that would mean a regression. Do you catch that situation too? Um, no, because I'm still blank, that's okay. Uh, okay. So it would say, okay. Uh, right. So you, if you would remove that, that checks on Yeah, the then. Yes. Yeah, but I usually leave it on for this, but uh, that could be uh, subject to maintaining the tests. So. Like uh, you want it always to look the new thing, you just remove the old checksum and then will say, okay, that's bad. Right. If it uh, ever sees it again. But sometimes I, I rerun old tests uh, using the current uh, test suite, yeah. and then I still wanted to say uh, everyone, everything was okay. And yeah, but my point is you might want to be interested in having regressions uh, be detected. But yeah, I can understand. Yeah, that. yes, Why? I'm. Uh, there are uh, more serious regressions, uh, <laughs> like things are really breaking. Yeah, yeah, sure. And um, usually, um, you have a look at the overview page. Um, like here, there is also some details page, uh -huh. like here. And it has uh, plenty of screenshots uh, of things, like. Um, were rated. Here timed out waiting for the bootloader because uh, there was a new bootloader background image and uh, then timed out waiting for this and for this. Uh, needed to update the signatures there. Right. Uh, and uh, here it just did some tests like uh, super up which is uh, open source update mechanism and uh, said oh unknown result uh, and you can just <coughs> click here to see what it did do. Oh, it had some multi level upgrades and uh, didn't get where it should. So I improved my tests afterwards and I got better results then. And uh, I did the setup here for the Modsmo test suite and you can look how it did it, like uh, installing the GCC and main things or you can, ah, they are not auto check test, which have no MD5 sums uh, whatsoever attached. Uh, so you can just say, okay, let's uh, have a look at uh, DF and free and whatever and uh, see interesting things. So uh, it's just recorded for later reference and I capture the list of packages that are installed so I can see, oh, this was this version working and this version not working and have the difference there. Right. And uh, here uh, it will hide the OK results so it doesn't get into the way. And usually you just have a short look at, oh, this looks strange. Ah, but is it? Ah, GLX here is not uh, working in KDN, Lisa, whatever, uh, for two years. Uh, or uh, here, evolution not fitting into 800 uh, by 600 by default. Well, can't do much about it, but uh, yes, uh, it's all there in the tests, and you can easily see what it is. So, uh, test two. I still run the tests. I would like to something. Yeah. Uh, do you always run all the tests, or? Is yep. there a test management system <coughs> everything like chosen, chosen only tests which match to the uh, Partly, yes. Uh, I have some, uh, there are many, many different variants of tests and um, there are ways to the left. For example, there is a test for Banshee, say. And of course, we don't install Banshee on KDE. So it says uh, here in its this applicable method, uh, if desktop equals Kidomi, then test Banshee. And oh, it's not installed on the live CD, so we don't test it there either. And uh, with this method, you can just give some environment variables and uh, have uh, the proper test selected. And I also have some way like uh, say the X term test 
here, uh, which isn't run. That's a nice video flag I said, uh, where only one uh, video which can be uploaded to YouTube as promotional material uh, for our marketing uh, guys. And uh, there, I don't do the experiment console tests, so uh, I skip that here. And so yes, uh, you can uh, skip tests you don't want or <laughs> skip tests that uh, don't make sense in a certain situation. Uh, I would like to ask you another thing. Yeah. Um, how will you organize your tests to keep up, not to get overwhelmed? Like, do you organize them just in directories and uh, uh, you're looking right over all of them? Or do you have a proper Test management system. Yes, some, some, yes. Uh, for Kunzuse, I have this Makefall profile system uh, where uh, I have a test scheduler uh, that will say, okay, for the latest release, I want to run the GNOME test, the KDE test, the LXDE test, the Live CD test, the USB boot test, and uh, how much of it and uh, which architecture. Um, so, um, yes, uh, some, uh, but it's of course not perfect. And uh, I also did adapt my testing core for Debian and for Fedora. And uh, there I don't have any of the scheduling uh, done because I'm not so much into uh, how to select the different desktops or programs or whatever. Uh, here. the installer uh, in a few hours and uh, uh, did pretty much the same, just uh, using default values and uh, running everything and uh, was installation slightly sped up for uh, <laughs> <laughs> convenience of viewing uh, by a factor of 60. Mm. So, yes, it's really nice to be here. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have a question. Can you yeah. record the, the keystrokes or do you have to write the scripts manually by hand? Um, currently, I write them by hand. Uh, but it wasn't very much a problem because I just uh, did it once manually and uh, took notes uh, aside and. Uh, that uh, pretty much translated one to one to the scripts. Yeah. Uh, you have a uh, MD5 sense yeah. from part, for part of the screen. So how yeah. do you get them to put them in the screen? Uh, the log file has all the MD5 sums with its form. Okay. Uh, or I have a uh, in-stage detect uh, script which will also uh, Calculates the MD5 sums for any given uh, PPM file, uh, which is what QAML produces. But, uh, but how do you get the MD5 sum for a particular region? Uh, do you have to do that manually, or is there some. No, with the script, with the in stage detect scripts. Let's say uh, we have uh, here our test run, which has these uh, QAML screenshot files, which are. Somewhere. Oh. Yes. 
the chest room, to make three. Yep. And uh, so I just say, okay, give me the ND5 cents, and it will uh, use uh, PPM processing and uh, copy parts of the image and uh, calculate ND5 cents, which can be used uh, for test result marking as okay or error or whatever. So, yes, there is still some manual work, but uh, there can be more automated, I think. So, oh yeah, the Fedora thing, which is this one. And uh, it's not uh, very difficult to adapt to different distributions, or not just Linux distributions, that's a nice thing. You can use it to test about anything that runs in QEMU and accepts keyboard input and produces video output or maybe even serial output or whatever. So PSD or Illumos or even the evil Redmond uh, operating system. So it's rather versatile because it uh, doesn't need any special uh, provisions within uh, the testing and uh, tested operating system, but does everything from the outside. It uses keyboard input from the outside and takes screenshots from the outside. Yeah, that's the dark party. <laughs> yeah, but of course it's a video, so you can just skip somewhere in the middle, usually. But here, and you can see what is going So, that's a really nice Can you send mouse events or is only keystrokes? Um, currently, it only do, does keystrokes, but that was more or less a limitation of KVM, or maybe I used it in the wrong way. But key keystrokes are more reliable because, yes, uh, windows pop up in a different position or uh, they look different, and uh, you uh, click into the wrong place and uh, might be more uh, effort of maintenance. But there is actually uh, some project doing that too, uh, which I will show later. Let's go on. running the tests and using memory. <laughs> Maybe we should just stop this here. So yeah. So there are limitations of course uh, apart from having to maintain uh, this whole lot. Um, so uh, well known theoretical uh, Professor Dijkstra said uh, that testing is very good to prove the presence of bugs, but is hopefully hopelessly inadequate uh, to show the absence. To prove it, you know, that it's not possible because yeah, programs have so many possible ways to go and options to input. Uh, but luckily, programs uh, are often structured like this, uh, where you just say, OK, I test uh, the main parts, which goes uh, right through the end. And if that works, yes, uh, the program uh, can be used uh, the way it might work. So um, there is some guaranteed quality you get uh, when you have your chest run and, uh, and have uh, showed that it worked the way it should mm -hmm. in this case. And yes, it's signed uh, again. Details. Uh, so, uh, there are other things that are difficult to test with uh, this approach to automatic testing. Uh, 
is uh, hardware related stuff, of course, because uh, QEM or KVM uh, only emulates uh, one certain disk controller and one certain network device and one certain uh, video graphics card. Uh, but if you yeah, very limited, uh, but it still helps uh, because you find the software bugs uh, before, uh, before the actual testers uh, get the version. So uh, the actual testers can concentrate on finding the more difficult bugs uh, which you can't. So you still get some improvements there uh, which you want. The other nice thing. Uh, no, uh, the other thing you can't test is things uh, that change all the time, uh, like, say, a screensaver uh, that does some random stuff in uh, uh with stars passing by, and you can't tell uh, that it really look uh, the way it should because it always <coughs> looks uh, different. Yeah. And signatures work, work, and sometimes uh, there are even uh, things other things that uh, pop up randomly, uh, like happens on this one here. No, from the server. I have my own copy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, sometimes things are just randomly, like uh, the window placement in certain window managers, they, op they open the first window and it was always in the middle, and the next window will pop up anywhere, and you can just say, okay, this piece of the screen should look like this, but you could use the um, saved images and say, okay, if I find uh, this uh, image, like, here is this rectangle and it looks like this uh, test is okay. Uh, it's not implemented yet, but we are working on this. Uh, same goes for Firefox, which uh, sometimes varies a little in positioning, uh, layout, something. So there is still room for improvement, which will be reported later. So, let's fix stuff. find bugs uh, which aren't bugs in the testing operating system, but which are bugs in your testing environment or for the KVM itself, because uh, it's still uh, not 1.0 for reasons. And uh, yes, it's not perfect emulating everything. And uh, somehow you need to tell how. Usually you can just use an older version also as an cross-check or I often use a virtual box and if the bug happens there, uh, it's rather unlikely that it's related to KVM because it's uh, very different. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, uh, there are also other projects um, doing automated testing. Uh, for example, KVM Autotest, uh, which uses a pretty similar uh, methodology. Uh, this is so-called uh, Stack Engine, and it uh, also has uh, regions of interest, which are parts of the screen it looks at. And yes, it's um, also similar with Python. Uh, but uh, I didn't know about it uh, when I started uh, working on my OS Autotest code. So I didn't uh, look into this uh, exam. And then there's uh, Zikori, which is uh, Java, so cross-platform, and allows to uh, do graphical scripting uh, with a Python engine and Java, so JSON, uh, uh, which I will show in a minute. And then there's Selenium, uh, specifically uh, for web application testing, like, say, you have a Ruby on Rails application or um, Django, whatever, uh, then you uh, can use that. But I didn't look into the Lenium because it's uh, is not a web application yet. And so the good thing is here. It uh, has some integrated development environment. They can, uh, 
create your tests in a very short time, very easily, because you uh, just say, okay, uh, say I want to test uh, some open office things. Uh, here. Uh, we just say, okay, let's paste some text. Yeah. Paste. Uh, let's paste some text. Like, yes, words, classic. That, that's a uh, project is uh, also in development. Yes. Uh, but uh, you can say, okay, uh, click a certain button, and it will click the button for you, and you can save the scripts and run them later. checklist uh, in there so that everything that belongs to this test is contained in the single file. One question. Um, yeah, question. You take a lot of MD sums of images from a time point where you start and just check them on afterwards. <coughs> Do you find that the actual time, how long, how long time everything takes? plays a big role in how sensitive the test is. Is it? Uh, I'm not sure if I understood the question. If I understand your system correctly, you start the test yes. at time zero, and then you let it run and you take snapshots of the, the frame uh, from it. Yeah, I always take snapshots of screenshots. If you change the test somehow, so you change the time, something takes a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, will that ruin the and the sums later on, so you are no. sensitive on time. time. Really? Uh, because uh, the tests uh, usually end with a certain image and if it's end up. up. You just stop it first, first change from here is wrong. Uh, uh, that would wait until the test is done. Uh -huh. and, uh, 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 usually uh, looks at the image at the end of the test. Uh, like, okay, uh, this uh, girl did re return uh, okay in this case, and uh, this was seen in this particular screenshot. Okay, so you start the test, do the processing until an end state, and just check the end state. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, look at the image has been seen, or the N5 sound has been seen uh, there. Okay, so there's okay, so just one sound for each test that you're checking. Yeah. Well, I, I think I get it. Yeah. Good. Okay, any more questions?